The true crime reporter never settles for standing outside the yellow crime scene tape. You knock on doors, dig through records, and cultivate sources to get to the bottom of the story. I'm Robert Riggs, the host and creator of the True Crime Reporter podcast, back with another story from three decades of investigative reporting. In this episode, I pulled out my reporter's notebooks, my law enforcement sources opened up their confidential case files, we sat down together to talk. And you can listen in to our journey into darkness. But before you do, be advised that this podcast is for a mature audience and not for the faint of heart. Some episodes may contain profanity and graphic details of violent crimes. To follow True Crime Reporter, text True Crime to 33777. Text True Crime, that's two words, True Crime to 33777. With that said, here we go on another journey into darkness. My investigation of the parole of serial killer Kenneth McDuff uncovered a shadowy world of influence peddling inside the Texas prison and parole systems. For years, parole board members and their staff had been leaving the system to become parole consultants. They, in effect, went to the dark side, using their relationships, if not money, with their old cronies still on the parole board to release their inmate clients early. Fireworks broke out in a Texas Senate hearing when the former chairman of the parole board was subpoenaed to answer why he paroled serial killer Kenneth McDuff and who he represented as a parole consultant. Texas inmates thought a ticket to freedom had arrived in their prison mail. They started receiving personal letters from former parole board chairman James Granberry. You may recall from the first episode that Granberry suddenly resigned his chairmanship of the parole board a year earlier, after being grilled by Senator Ted Lyon about the release of death row inmates, including Kenneth McDuff. Granberry set up shop as a parole consultant. He solicited business from inmates and their families. When inmates opened their prison mail from Granberry, they felt as if they had drawn the get-out-of-jail-free card in Monopoly. Granberry wrote, A mutual friend of ours told me that you might desire representation in securing your parole. If you would like for me to review your case to determine whether I might be able to help you, please write to me, or you may want a member of your family to contact me. Granberry stated at the end of the letter, I'm enclosing a couple of my cards for your use. Granberry claimed to me he didn't know how those cards ended up inside Texas prisons. In June of 1992, I recorded my confrontation interview with Granberry. When you left the board, you became a consultant, and you had some inmates pass your cards out in the prison. <laughs> I'm told that happened, too. I don't know how it happened to that. How, well, how would an inmate get your cards? I have no idea. They were out soliciting business. No, 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 no. That, that, I don't know how that happened, but I was told that story. I learned from inmate sources that staff members of the parole system were helping Granberry drum up business from inmates and their families. John Moriarty investigated Granberry and parole consultants for the U.S. Attorney in Waco. He says it was all a scam. There was also uh, lists of people that were on mandatory release coming up that the, some of these parole board uh, members, former parole board members that were consultants now, would get these lists and know who was going to be released. And so they would get the family information from their contact inside the agency, call the family and say, if you come today with four or $500 or 600 or 1000 he'll be out next Thursday. I guarantee you that. Well, the reason he could guarantee it is because it's already done. It's a, he's a mandatory release. This seemed to me to be the perfect crime because Texas is under pressure to release, you know, hundreds and hundreds of inmates. So uh, who's going to notice that I'm taking money to let the worst of the worst out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, um, you know, they're, they're, they're feeding off the system. You know, they're uh, uh, taking advantage of an, an, an opportunity, a business opportunity in their minds. 
Absolutely. You got to understand when when it's your family member and they're in prison and you love them and and uh, you know beyond all else you'll do whatever it takes to get them out. Well, you know it's just a it's it's bottom feeding it at its worst. Bottom feeding at its worst. Here's a sample of that bottom feeding. The wealthy parents of an inmate from Dallas received an unsolicited phone call from Granberry and later a $5,000 parole consulting contract to help get their son released early from prison. Granberry even paperclipped a note to the contract written on his old parole board memo pad, a not-so-subtle message that he still had influence. And here's another sample of widespread bottom feeding. Granberry solicited the board to release a Houston inmate that was serving a life sentence for paying a hitman $1,800 to kill his father. The Harris County prosecutors opposed the parole, writing to the board that this was a premeditated crime of pure jealousy and greed. When I questioned the ethics of the former parole board chairman taking money to get his old cronies on the board to release his inmate clients, Granberry took exception in my June 1992 interview with him. Is it appropriate for you to go through that revolving door and one day take off the hat as board chairman, a very powerful position, and the next day be taking power. money to represent inmates to try to help them get out? It's not a very powerful position, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's uh, not unethical and it's not uh, illegal, but I, I'm choosing not to do it anymore. Inmates told me Granberry still knew how to flex his muscle inside the parole system, even though he was now on the outside. A Dallas insurance salesman serving three consecutive 16-year sentences for bilking investors out of $9 million hired Granberry. When it came time to walk out of prison, the inmate told me Granberry tried to shake him down for more money. When he refused to pay, guards hustled him onto a prison bus. He spent weeks riding from prison unit to prison unit across the state of Texas, lost in the system. No one would tell his family where he was or what had happened to him. The Criminal Justice Committee of the Texas Senate will come to order. In the wake of my reports about Granberry's involvement in the parole of serial killer Kenneth McDuff and Granberry's parole consulting activities, Senator Ted Lyons subpoenaed Granberry to testify before the Senate Criminal Justice Committee. Lyons opened the hearings with a statement on September 18th of 1992. Today, we're going to consider many recommendations aimed at curing a diseased parole system. We're also going to continue to explore the circumstances surrounding the parole of Kenneth Allen McDuff, one of the worst monsters ever known in this state's history. The committee is also going to continue to examine the parole consulting business because this type of activity is not regulated, there is no way to ensure ethical standards are being adhered to. Granberry's criminal defense attorney, Herman Gotcher, told senators that Granberry would not testify unless he received immunity from prosecution. As a result of the tragic events surrounding the parole of Kenneth McDuff, public outrage has caused a great deal of scurrying, in the legislative and executive branches of the government to find a scapegoat. Dr. Granberry has been ridiculed in the press by the chairman of the committee and accused of criminal conduct. As recently as last night, it was reported on Channel 24 and here in Austin, news that Ted Lyon was accusing Dr. Granberry of, quote, conflicts of interest, unquote that violated the state law while he served on the Board of Pardons and Paroles. In addition, Democratic Governor Honorable Ann Richards has called upon the Travis County District Attorney's Office to instruct the Travis County Grand Jury to conduct a criminal investigation of the parole of <coughs> Kenneth McDuff. That investigation is now ongoing. And I might add that the assistant district attorney in charge of that is present in this committee at this time. Dr. Granberry will not cooperate in this circus and will not assist this committee in its fishing expedition. 
I have instructed Dr. Granberry to assert his right under the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution in Article 1, Section 10 of the Texas Constitution. Granberry, through his attorney, refused to turn over a list of inmates that he represented as a parole consultant. Senator Lyon and Granberry's attorney sparred over the senator's questions. Granberry flashed a smug grin when Senator Lyon asked about the parole of Kenneth McDuff. Well, then I have some questions that I want to ask. And you can assert your Fifth Amendment rights on each and one, every one of those. Mr. Granberry, did you, why did you abstain from the vote on the initial parole panel that released Kenneth Allen McDuff? He submits his privilege, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Chairman, I want to ask the chairman whether or not he's going to sit here for now 15 or 20 minutes in front of the media here to castigate an honorable citizen of this state by repeatedly asking questions concerning his privilege and conduct or just some personal reason for harassment. Mr. Chairman, if that's going to continue, I'm going to state to Mr. Granberry to get up and walk out of here. Well, then you can do that, counsel. Let well, me explain to you to, something, sir. To comply with you. We're investigating, and I'm going to ask him some questions for the record. I've got about 15 questions to ask right, him. Sir. That's reasonable. Now, we're investigating the release of a man who is personally uh, under investigation for the alleged murders of about 15 women. I'm aware of that. Are you aware of that, counsel? I was aware of where you were, probably, well, Mr. Good. Chairman. Well, that's pretty important to this it committee. It certainly is. It's important to any citizen in this state, not only this committee. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Now, here are the questions. State your questions, Mr. Chairman. Did you violate the conflict of interest policy in voting on Kenneth McDuff's release as a member of the administrative review panel? Granberry took the Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination 16 times, setting a modern-day record for the Texas legislature. Have you ever tried to influence a board member to deny an inmate's parole because that inmate owed you money? I instruct Mr. Granberry to assert his privilege. The systemic corruption uncovered inside Texas parole and prison systems angered the lawman who brought Kenneth McDuff to justice. Three decades later, retired U.S. Marshal Dan Stoltz still gets mad thinking about it. I'm going to tell you this: this case, this case is an emotional case. There was a lot of a lot of young women that were young boys as well, and there was no sense in. And when he was released, there was no justice for the people in the state of Texas because he was released when he shouldn't have been. We weren't protecting our people by releasing this animal into our community. And that's what rubs me the wrong way. And I get very emotional when I know that we released them. Next on True Crime Reporter, Kenneth McDuff calls on trial for two capital murders and scuffles with deputies. It was the trial in Houston, Texas, and I said, I am aware of what he did the day before where he jumped four deputies in the elevator. And I basically told him that I'd be happy to be there, but I would be well armed and if he so much he scratched his ass in the courtroom, that I'd kill him right there in the courtroom. Aren't you glad it's not a crime to love reality TV? Hey, true crime lovers, this is Shannon, one of the researchers for this podcast. Paper Chaser Paper Goods is your go-to spot for all of your reality TV obsessions. Check out paperchaserpaper.com and channel your love of the Real Housewives with Paper Chaser's reality TV-themed gifts. From cocktail napkins to Bravo TV themed invitations, Paper Chaser has everything you need to host happy hour at your place and be the it girl of your inner circle. Now remember, it's not a crime to love reality TV. Paper Chaser believes life's a party, so celebrate something every day. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for the latest Paper Chaser in reality TV scoop. We'll see you on paperchaserpaper.com. True Crime Reporter is a trademarked and copyrighted news show. It is an original co-production with podcast ad reps, hosted and written by me, Robert Riggs, executive producer, Elizabeth Arnold, audio production by Matt Stoker, original music by Blair King, associate producer, Siler Burr, social media producer, Grace Woodward, publicity, Tim Livingston, PR, 
Photography, Igor Kurgulots. Graphics, Brian David Kerr Designs. Special thanks to Gary Laverne, author of Bad Boy from Rosebud, The Murderous Life of Kenneth Allen McDuff. The audio recordings of the Senate Criminal Justice Committee hearings are courtesy of the Texas State Archives. Archive sound bites included in the episodes are from my original Reporter's Notebook tape recordings. And for our listeners who stayed to hear the credits, here's a little bonus. The, uh, back when, when McDuff's in high school, does he have the community? Does he have Rosebud, the people of Rosebud afraid of him? Oh, absolutely. I would say everybody that knew him was concerned and did not want to have any dealings with him because they were afraid. What was there about him that struck fear in everyone's heart? Well, he had the general reputation of being a bully, of being tough. He was a large physical structure. Uh, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, weighing oh, anywhere from 250 to 270, depends on time, year, and so forth. But he was extremely uh, good physical, con- excuse me, good physical condition. He worked in the concrete business with his dad and his brother Lonnie, and he was strong, very strong. But Actually, the only people that I have ever known that he has physically done harm to has been young women and young boys. My personal opinion, he was a coward and he was a very, very sick individual.